welcome to March 19th of the year 2010, the seventh day of the week, not a work day, but a rest day, a day that the Lord calls His Sabbath. Well, brethren, let's get right on over into the Lord's Care Ministry, day 77 of the year 2010. Pardon me, 2011. Better read it instead of just try to pull it out of my head. Today we're going to talk about the mercy seat. Brethren, I suggest you write down the chapter and verses so that you can go back and study the whole context that out of your with your own leisure. That way you'll be able to get more out of it than what we can give to you here. And to do that, we'll go to Exodus chapter 25, verses 10 through 22. Also, brethren, if you want to, you can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video so that you'll be able to read along with this. So we're going to start with Exodus chapter 25. And verse 8, I want the people to build me a sacred residence where I can live among them. If you find yourself moved by God's holiness and love and power, just spend some time reflecting on his imagery. Scripture is filled with examples of God's propensity to speak to us through symbols and metaphors. Here is one to meditate on. In Exodus 25, God is unfolding his plans for Moses to build the Ark of the Covenant. And Exodus 25 and verse 8, I want the people of Israel to build me a sacred residence. God tell them where I can live among them. God explains to Moses exactly how to, the ark is to be built. In Exodus chapter 25, verses 17 through 22, make the ark cover the place of atonement out of pure gold. It must be three and three quarters feet long and two and a quarter feet wide. Then use hammered gold to make two cherubim and place them at the two ends of the atonement cover. Attach the chairman to each end of the atonement cover, making it all one piece. The cherubim will face each other, looking down on the atonement cover with their wings spread out above it. I will meet with you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover between the gold cherubim. The ark was built as God directed, with two cherubim facing each other on each end of the atonement cover. God called it the mercy seat. It was here that God met with his people. Now let us fast forward to another event in history. Mary Magdalene had just discovered the stone rolled away from the tomb where Jesus had been buried. John records in John chapter 20 verses 11 through 12. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying and as she wept she stooped and looked in. She saw two white robed angels sitting at the head and foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Another time in history, another place, another group of witnesses, but the scene is the same. Two angels seated at opposite ends of the burial cloth of Jesus, the cover of atonement. The survivor had once again come down to meet with his people and standing at the entrance of the tomb, Mary saw what Moses saw. What awe 
humanity would soon come to recognize the mercy seat of God. Brethren, as you read through the description of the Ark of the Covenant, what thoughts came to your mind about God? Did you see other bits of symbolism and description? Lord, I approach thy mercy seat. I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. That was in Exodus chapter 25 and verse 22. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Do you want to speak to God on the mercy seat? Then start getting rid of all the traditions of men that has been built into our system. No matter how we try, we all follow the tradition of men in some way. But but the idea is to try to break that tradition. Realize what it is and then step away from it. If you want to see the kingdom and be with the Father and Jesus for eternity, then get down on your knees, ask the Father for the help to break away from the tradition of men. Ask him to show you that narrow path of the kingdom. Ask him to help you get off that broad path that leads to destruction. And brethren, if you truly want to change, I ask also for the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of the letter he sent to you and that's found in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for this Sabbath. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.